Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Shay Ali here with you on Inspired Online. And this afternoon, I've got the real pleasure of welcoming Mr. James Lavers, the one and only. Um, <sighs> hey. <sighs> Now, if you don't know who he is or you've not worked with him before, you are in for a treat today. This guy, well, he left it in my capable hands to, to say what um, I would about his bio. So I'm going to say this. Um, he is a phenomenal, not just a phenomenal coach, but a phenomenal business advisor. So if you have a business, especially if you want to go online, I want to know how to really work those things and really work the screen particularly, this is the guy to go and talk to. So I feel that I'm being put to the test today as well because he's going to check out my... <laughs> my terrible zoom quality and all that but you know he's the man he's worked for sony in terms of selling on screen he's sold on screen on qvc so he's delighted our screens there he's advised mr tony robbins to make that small tweak which sold tony robbins lots and lots of copies of um power talk it was back then um he has Plus he's done, he's done loads of stuff. He's worked with entrepreneurs like you, like me, and he's here to delight us today. Mr. James Lavers, everybody. <laughs> Hello. Hey, Shay. Hey, how was that? That was pretty good. Right. We should, we should probably tell people our process. Before the show, we were like, how do we introduce? Do we just say, here's a random guy? Maybe. Yeah, like, and I said, oh, this, this is someone I picked up on the street, man, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Here he is, random guy. <laughs> Hi, random random guy. guy, but he actually has some skills. <laughs> Thank you. A random guy with skills. Random guy with skills. We like that. We like that. Anyway, he's also been, and I'm so grateful for this, a longtime supporter of Inspired. He came to us right at the beginning um, to support. Did you second us. one? Did second one. I know he turned up and has been turning up ever since. Really, when we had our our live events and um now that we're doing online well i could not have him on on our online uh show so i'm going to ask you the same question that i've asked everyone who's done our online which is if you had to share your wisdom with the world in a nutshell what would you say oh man <laughs> this is where that's that's why you ask the questions in advance isn't it that's what that's why you need an agent i need a booking agent <laughs> like, would you like to ask Mr. Lavers any questions? We'd like them sent a few weeks in advance, please, so that, we can, <laughs> so that he can gem me up on this question. All I'm doing is trying to buy time to answer that question. So if I was to, 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 to condense my wisdom, Shay, into a nutshell, obviously missing the nut, but just the shell, <clears throat> Because you have I'm to really... buy the nut, right? <laughs> yeah, we'll get to the nut later. The nut is the thing the shell would be i really am helping people to to freedom and freedom it, it, i think of us all really as like we're like helium balloons shay right like we're, we're we're born to rise as cheesy as that sounds i think we're born our natural state is to rise up yeah and as we go through life we get these uh, imagine if you added to that balloon all these little seemingly invisible threads and on the end of every thread there's a little weight and as we go through life, we pick up these threads, we pick up these ties, we pick up these constraints. Mm -hmm. And so that's when life starts to feel hard. That's when things get a bit crazy. That's when stories start to come in and, and you know, we, we start to get baggage, right? And there are those of us, so we stop rising. And so mm -hmm. for many people, we just float along. Right. For many, a lot of people just float along and they go, well, this is life, isn't it? Life's hard and we just float along. Some people, the weight of all their ties and all their constraints makes them sink and they and they go down and, you know, they stop moving. And mm -hmm. that's sad. That's sad. We don't like it. You know, we need to help those people. Yeah. And I think freedom to me isn't about I don't think you attain freedom in the same way that you attain a million bucks. I don't think you attain freedom in the same way you go out and buy a Ferrari. Although I think that's how a lot of people think about freedom, Shay. It's just like, freedom's something I gotta go get. And I'm like, well, I think of freedom, this isn't much of a nutshell, but I'll try and nutshell it. No, freedom it's all good, I love it. <laughs> freedom for me is the releasing of those constraints. It's mm. letting go, and like most of those constraints are in here, but they feel like they're out there. But they're not, they're, they're things we pick up about 
who we are, what mm. the world's like. You know, when things happen to us, we start to get these attitudes, we start to get these stories, we start to get these literal tags and uh, ties, excuse me, and drags. And the more we release those, the more we'll go back to our natural state of rising, you know? Yeah. And so the work I'm doing with people is, it's disguised as, hey, here's how to, you know, create an online business that get, you know, that means you can do good and get clients. But that's sort of a disguise for the real work I'm doing, which is helping people to release those ties. Nice. You know, and often what I find is, like anything in life, you learn, like, how much do we all learn when we're in, uh, you know, a serious relationship, for example? We learn so much about ourselves. We mm. learn so much about ourselves when we have children. I've got two kids, you know, in the next door. Say mm. hi, kids. Hey. They're screaming hi to you all at home. Oh, uh, lovely. <laughs> Right. So you, you have kids and you learn a bunch. And I think one area that, that, that I work with people is people who are trying to build and grow businesses. That's where you learn so much about these tags, about these drags on you. So mm. I'm doing it through the vehicle of business. But really what I'm doing is helping people to free themselves from constraints so they can rise again. Mm. That, that's that's my job. I love it. Really beautiful metaphor there with the balloon and the, you know, the lead constraints. Cause I mean, that's just very visual in terms of we can all relate to that. Um, and what it made me wonder is, are there any constraints that are actually good for you? Because if you get rid of all of them, the balloon, God knows where it goes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you're right. I think you're right. The, um, I think it's useful to, well, I don't, I mean, look, if, the, the idea, the kind of the Zen-like ideal is you are free of any desire, you are free of any story, and you are kind of detached from the world in that way, isn't it? You know, mm -hmm. you're like, I'm the Zen master in the cave. And it's like, well, you may have total freedom, but you are free from everything. You know, you have no constraints. So I think you're right. I think it's useful to have some, some friction. I don't okay. know what that is, though. I'm still exploring what that is. Like, what is useful friction to still have in your life? Mm. Because, you know, some of that friction is good. Like, having challenges, certain challenges, for example, is good to have. You know, have things mm. to rub up against. But the, the thing is, people make a lot of these constraints themselves. Mm. Um, and I always, I always invite like people to sort of like, well, which constraint do you want to keep? So, you know, sometimes you might invite somebody to let go of a story. I'll, I'll, give, you an, I'll give you an example here, right? Yeah. So it's not just out there. Tech. Mm -hmm. So a lot of what I'm helping people with is like how to start an online business, how to create courses and online programs. Is that you, we, that's where we were involved a decade ago. Do you remember? I oh, my God. It, it just feels ago. like yesterday, doesn't it? It's crazy. <laughs> Ten years ago we were doing this stuff, right? Wait. And so, like, I, I will help somebody with that. And that often means facing a lot of your fears and your frustrations around tech mm. and I always that is the perfect example to me of a constraint is people go I hate tech mm. you know and what they do is they don't just state it they kind of own that story so then they're like everything becomes this drama about like well it's all happening so slowly because of the tech and I can't do that because of the tech you know oh, I can't. and I often have to ask people do you want this story like mm. do you want it like on and it's a serious question because some people do <laughs> Some, and I've, I've had clients go oh if I let go of this story I'll have no other excuse and they're like that's more scary and I've had a few very brave souls literally say this to me and they're like I think I need this tech story because if I let go of that I've literally got no excuse not to be getting on with stuff and they're like like what, what would happen maybe I'd get stuff done really quickly and have this successful business and they're like actually, I'm not sure I'm ready for that. And I think that's why I've got the constraint. And yeah. to those amazing, honest souls, I say, I salute you. But it's, yeah. that's an example of sometimes you have to question, well, if there is this constraint, why am I holding on to this story? Mm. What are the implications of letting go of it? Mm. What are the implications of going, me making tech a drama is just a drama that mm. I need. Why do I need it? Because if I didn't have that drama, I'd have no other reason for getting my message online, getting it out there, getting it, making me clients, making me money. And for a lot of people, that's terrifying. They go, but oh, that's terrifying. And I go, that's cool. Then hold on to your tech story because that works brilliantly. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I think you're right. I think some friction, I'm sure is, there is some friction. There are some weights. There are some constraints that are useful to have. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, I hold on to the story that I tell myself that like being a father means I can't just get on a plane tomorrow. Mind you, at the time we're doing this, we can't anyway, but no. you know, I can't just get on a plane tomorrow and just go live somewhere for three months. Right mm. now, strictly speaking, that's a constraint. Yeah, you could, of course you could. Right. But I hold on to that as a story. It's like, well, actually that's a useful story for me because I don't want to just be jetting off and leaving my kids behind. Yeah. I quite like this constraint where I see them every 10 days, but I still realize it is still a self-created constraint. Mm. You know? And I think that's the, that's the thing to me is it's like recognizing that oftentimes we make these constraints as if they are outside of our control. But mm. a lot of them aren't. A lot of them are our own story, you know? Yeah. So how do you, if it's a constraint that's not useful to you, and we'll go with the tech example because we started with that. How do I go from, I scream at my computer every day because it's not doing things automatically to now I'm in love with Zoom or whatever it is? Yeah. Um, well, that, that, that's, a, that's a really way, good the way you phrase that because it's like now I'm in love with Zoom. And it's like, well, you have to start with how do you want it to be? Mm. How do you want it to be? And it's like a lot of people assume that I'm a techie. And I'm like, no, I'm not a techie. I, the way I approach it is I go, what do I want to do? What do I want to have happen? You know, um, let me give you another real world example. I don't want complicated online. I've been running my online business for 15 years now. Yeah. And, you know, got, we've got thousands of customers, 143 countries around the world. And a lot of people assume that I have these, this complicated technological behind the scenes stuff with probably hordes of coders making all these things. And I haven't. In fact, what, because the question I ask myself is, I've got this expertise I want to share with the world. Mm -hmm. And for anyone watching this, that could be, you might have the secret to spiritual awakening, or you might have the perfect cupcake recipe. It doesn't matter, right? Anything in between, you know. <laughs> Let's just take the cupcake recipe, right? You've got oh, that amazing... sounds great to me. If you do, oh, please yeah, send some to my home. <laughs> I'll take cupcakes over spirituality right now, actually. Totally. <laughs> yeah. So I've got this great cupcake recipe, and I want to show people how I make cupcakes, right? So I record myself. You know, I get my phone, and I film myself recording my cup. Say it takes a couple of hours to film me making my cupcakes. Mm. And I'm like, okay, I've got this two-hour course, basically. I've got, I've got a course in how to make amazing cupcakes. What do I do with that? And what a lot of people do is they go straight to constraints. They're like, oh, I need to edit it. And blah, 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 blah. I need to do all that shit. And I'm like, maybe not. Yeah. The question I ask is, what would you like to have happen? And when you really answer that question, for me, what comes up is I'm like, I want to get this in. I want, I want people paying for me this as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. I want to get this into the homes, into the heads of the people who really want to know how to make a great cupcake. That's it. At the end of the day, I just want to get it to them. Mm. So you go, okay, well, what could be a way of doing that? Well, let me give you an example. Facebook, right? Mm. There's a lot of Ferrari at the moment. Everyone's like, oh, Facebook groups. I want a Facebook group. Well, you don't want a Facebook group. You want what you hope a Facebook group will give you, first mm. of all. <laughs> you want probably lots of people following you and thinking you're amazing and ready to buy whatever you want. So, okay, cool. One thing you can use Facebook groups for that I use and have done this for a year, probably getting on five six, seven years or more now, is I'll use a Facebook group to deliver a course. Mm -hmm. Because it's free. Yeah. It's free. And I can literally upload the videos straight into a group. Nobody else can see it who hasn't bought the product. Somebody who buys the product, I just add them to the group. There you go. And it doesn't cost me anything. It's super quick. Most people are spending all their day on Facebook anyway. Now, when I say that, people immediately go, oh, so you're teaching us how to do Facebook courses. And I'm like, no, 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 that's not the point of what I'm saying. The point of what I'm saying is I want the way of least friction. Mm. If my question is, what do I want to have happen? How do I want it to be? Mm. Well, I've got this cupcake recipe and I'm showing people how to make cupcakes the way I make them. So they're badass. I just want to get that in front of people. So when you ask those questions, you kind of cut through all the noise and you get straight to, Okay, well, what's the easiest, fastest way of getting this into people's hands, mm. you know, who have paid for it? And oftentimes when you ask those right questions, you, you'll, you'll find a solution that is so much more um, like friction free. Do you know what I mean? Like Teflon. You'll find a solution that's like Teflon where you'll just be. And I find that 
in that way, I'm able to, be, I've been very prolific. I've, I've released thousands and thousands of hours of videos. I've got yeah. dozens of online courses that are selling. And people always look at me and they assume I'm working all the time. And I'm not. I'm working like two or three days a week maximum. Mm. And, and the, but the, the, the reason is because I don't choose those really messy, noisy ways that have so many considerations. If you choose the mm. path of most considerations, mm. uh, of most constraints, it always takes you longer. Mm. You know? and, and I always, uh, here's a great way as well that will help people to, to answer that question, right? Which is, um, what, what's important to you is rarely what's important to your customer. Mm, and so okay. what I often do to release constraints is I'll always go, forget what I think's important. Like if I go only by what I think's important, I'm gonna think that the way it looks is really important, that, that me being in the picture is really important, that it's all professional, professional, you know, all this kind of thing. Like that's it, what I think's important. But if you're the person who really wants a great cupcake recipe, like the best cupcake recipe in the world, and you wanna see somebody make it, then what's important to you is that, that's it. You just wanna see somebody clearly and simply taking you through the process. And I think that's what oftentimes, again, busies up all of this, you know? Yeah. Busies up this process of like, and so we just take on more and more friction, more and more, we make it hard for ourselves mm. because ultimately we want to. Yeah. We wanna make it hard because then we have a reason, we have something to blame for our mm. failure. And woe betide, anybody that is free of anything they can blame anything on because the, 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 I, want, I want us all to get to a place where we got no excuse left we got no mm. excuses left other than uh, i just can't do this you know i just i choose not to do this you know <laughs> fair like, enough yeah oh, that can't argue with place. that yeah if we could all get to a place where we're like i got nothing i got no excuse not to do this Mm. then you get stuff done so much quicker your creativity gets out to the world it's one of the things i respect about you so much shay is what you did with inspired is you were just like look we've got this bar in mayfair mm. i know all these brilliant people hello you didn't overcomplicate it you started, <laughs> with, you started with such a simple idea and it's been going on for what like Six, six and a half years. Year. Yeah, yeah six and a half yeah but it started with such a great simple idea that didn't mm. have a lot of friction attached to it you knew all these amazing people these great thinkers you know yeah. and you were like why don't i just ask them to come along and speak and you did and it's it's six years on and it's still people are loving this you know yeah and, and i and i think that's that's the key is like you, you, it doesn't have to be a drama no you know? Well, I, d I don't know if I ever told you how I knew the bar either, but actually I was going to hire it for my 30th. And the only reason I didn't is because it didn't have a uh, late license. It had a license till 11 rather right. than three. And I used to like going out till three at that age. <laughs> Not so much now. Well, I don't know, you know, now I don't go out at all. But um, <laughs> um, yeah, you know, I love that. You don't have to make it hard. It doesn't have to be perfect. I think there's a lot of people out there though that are thinking, I don't look on screen, I don't have a green screen, I don't have the right light, you know, my kitchen looks, well, I won't swear, but it doesn't look good enough and all this kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> and I love that freedom of actually none of that matters. It doesn't. So what I would say is how, if, if you've got this going on in your head, how can you make yourself look as good as possible, recognize <laughs> that you have certain constraints? Yeah. Yeah, that's a really good question. And I will just talk to what you said there, which is like, first thing is you've got to question it, right? Like you've got to question it. So when you go like, because most of the time when we think we don't look good enough or we're worried about how we sound or we're worried about getting it wrong, that's all going on beneath. Like it's kind of rambling on in the background. Mm. So you've got to spot it and you've just got to go, what, like, what, what, why do I, number one, if you think, for example, you don't look good. Mm. You sort of, sort of ask yourself, and it's a tough one. Like I've got one of the things about I got this gap here. You know, I teach. never you noticed know? that. <laughs> I, I have that. Yeah. You would not believe how long I put off doing videos in 2005 because of this gap. I would do these videos, and I'd see the gap, and I'd be like, "Oh my god, I love this gap!" And of course, I it was super important to me. I was like, "Oh my god, they're going to think I'm a hillbilly. I'm a <laughs> oh, look at me. I look like." A, and it's like, I honestly delayed, 
this was pre YouTube. This was when Google, uh, there, there was a thing called Google video. And um, I, I kept doing these videos and putting them up on Google video and I'd watch them. I'd go, no, I can't do that. Look at me. I've got my two. And I kind of think you, for the most part, it reminds me of a story when you remember when you're at school, I remember being super young, like my son's age, about 10, 11 years old, and I'd be at school. And around the time that you're about 10 or 11 years old is usually when the first girl with boobs crops up in your year. And I'm, I'm talking to all my guy friends here and my girlfriends, because you all always remember this, is like, you either, if you're a woman, you either were that girl that was the first one that matured, and you're like, oh shit, right? Sorry. Oh. Oh, man. Don't worry, it's fine. Right? So, so you kind of, so we always remember that person at school and what did they do? They tried to hide it. And in trying to hide it, like I remember the girl in my year, I was maybe nine, ten years old. It was the first girl that went through puberty. And what did she do? She wore extra big sweaters to try and hide it. Mm. And what did it do? It just drew more attention to her. <laughs> you know? it yeah. just, we all just paid more attention to her. So I'm always like, look, you don't want to be that person. I'll tell you the other person is like, there was always the really tall kid. Do you remember that? There was always the really tall kid in class. And it was like, you are so tall. You know? yeah. And what did they do? They tried to walk around and be smaller, right? Mm -hmm. They tried to dip their head to hide it, right? And what did that do? It just drew more attention to it. And what I've come to learn is your hangups, the more hung up you are about them, the more people will notice them anyway. Right. Um, we live in an age now, Shay, that is different. Even from when, even from when you and I were first working together ten years ago, we live in a time now where people are craving real. They are craving something real. You know, mm -hmm. the, the, and I'm talking about beyond the word authentic. Hey, listen, I'm really authentic, but like real, real. You know, it's like we because we've been, we've kind of been lied to, whether wittingly or unwittingly, for for so long with the media. We just, we all know it when we're watching something real now. And when we find somebody who re is just, just being, they're not thinking about how they're coming across. They're not doing any of that. There's something magnetic about that these days. Mm. And what I would say is if you can, if you can get from self into service, mm. that's the first step. It's like you have to, what I find with a lot of people when I'm working with them on camera is before they go live, like before they come on camera, they're in their head. Like I, what I would say is that it's almost like they're turned inwards. All of their lenses, all of their sensors to the outside world are all kind of turning inwards into them. Mm. So they are, in many ways, they're in that, they're at their most sort of, um, what would the word be? They're at their most selfish just before they do a video. They're kind right. of thinking about them. What am I going to say? Oh God, do I look good? And, you know, they're preening, they're grooming, you know, and they're mm. adjusting their top, you know. And all of their senses are inwards. They're directed inwards. Mm. And I don't think you can serve people well like that. Right. You can put on a good show. You can definitely put on a good show that way. But it won't be real. And what I would say is before you do, the first thing to answer your question more directly is like the first thing you've got to do is put your senses to the outside world. Like you've mm. got to, when I look at that lens and I'm, it looks like I'm making eye contact with you now, it's like I'm really, my attention is on the outside world, not within me. I'm not worried about what I look like right now. I'm not worried about the gap in my tooth or this bit of hair that's poking out weird here, you know. And I think, so I think the first thing is controlling where your attention and focus is. Take it outside of you and what you're, you know, oh my God, what am I going to say? Do I look okay? You know, all those things are all internal focus things. Get on service. Mm. If we imagine the cupcake example, because it's a, it's a, a fairly <laughs> benign example. If you're that person sharing your cupcake recipe, just realize, like get, think of that person who really wants to learn it and get into their head instead. Get in, instead of getting into your own head, get into their head. What have they been doing? And I'm making this up, right? But let's just imagine somebody who's been trying to do cupcakes and sucking at it is probably really frustrated, right? They're probably feeling like, oh man, I've got the kids uh, school fair coming up and I've got to do these 20 cupcakes. I promised the other mums I'd do this or the other dads I'd do this and I've got to do this, you know. Like get into their world, not your own. Get into their world. When you get into their world and you start talking, they're going to feel like, you're in my head. You know my reality. This is amazing. And your connection will be instant because you're not focused on you so that's the inner game thing now the outer game thing is don't look at the screen 
Like you, so yeah. how it is these days, I'm just gonna turn my phone on, because I've got to illustrate this point in the only way I know how, which is to um, put my camera on. Now, when most of us are doing videos these days, we see our, we use the front-facing camera, right? We don't use the back-facing camera. We yeah. use the front-facing camera, that's fair enough. But the problem with this is, it's, we've got a built-in mirror. <laughs> you know, yes. like when I worked for a makeup company, uh, Bear Essentials, Bear Minerals is one of my um, corporate clients going years back. And one of the things we were very cognizant of when we were helping them with the marketing and the, helping their spokespeople to represent the brand on, on TV mm. was, the, what, what is it about a found, you know, you can't buy a foundation without having a mirror as well. If you buy mm. a foundation, part of the whole container is you get a mirror as well. So you can put it on, you can check yourself out and you can do all that adjusting. Yeah. The problem with our mobile phones is they're like that. Is when, yes. we, when we turn our camera on and we're about to do a live video or pre-recorded video and we do this, we see ourselves and we're like, oh, there I am. And so it's, it's almost like this. I'm looking at you now and it looks like I'm making eye contact. But mm. if I was looking at myself, like I'm looking at myself now in the screen, mm. so we don't have eye contact any longer. It looks like I'm looking, probably for most of our viewers, over your shoulder. Right. And I'm looking at myself. And now if I look at myself when I'm talking, firstly, how weird is that? Like I'm trying to talk to you, but I'm, I'm, uh, I'm looking at myself. Fixing well, my hair. <laughs> built mechanism to just adjust yourself and groom and preen and be like oh do my pecs look all right yeah i put my shoulders back that looks better there we go <laughs> and i we've lost all connection right because mm. i'm suddenly it's about like of course if you look at yourself you're going to start going oh do i look mm, mm, mm. i need the camera a bit higher up there we go i'll talk like this you know we start doing these ridiculous things <laughs> that we would only otherwise do if we had a mirror there you know, mm. so the, the other thing that I say to people is like, don't look at yourself. <laughs> it's like, look at the lens. Yes. Look at the lens. The people watching you feel like you're talking to them. Mm. And you can't get distracted by yourself. Now, I can still see me in my peripheral vision. But man, oh man, I'm not going to look at him. Because I know the minute I start looking at him, I'm going to be like, hmm, suck the cheeks in, lavers. Uh, you know, and all that, all that nonsense that, that gets people so self-conscious. So that's a technical thing. Like, it's, it's mm. quite hard to work with this. I've got one of my uh, licensed trainers, because we do a, a limited program where we, we train people to teach the stuff I teach. Mm. And one of my trainers had this great idea. She was like, look, get a post-it note and cover the whole of the screen except for the lens. So you're still streaming. You can even cut the post-it note so that if people are commenting on your live video, if you're doing if you're doing live, for example, yeah. you can see their comments coming through, but you, you can't look at yourself. Her name's Helen, she's amazing. And I, I, I was like, Helen, that is such a good tip. And, and she actually has another tip. I've got to give a big shout out for Helen. Her name's Helen Lord. You can check her out on Facebook. She's one of our licensed trainers. And Helen had this amazing tip. I hope she won't mind me sharing. I know she won't. She was like, find a magazine with a celebrity or somebody that represents your marketplace mm -hmm. and cut them out. Right, and it, the photo needs to be about this big of them. And she's like, cut an eye hole and put the eye hole over the lens, right? So the lens is there, but the hole, it kind of means that you can still look through at the lens. And she's like, suddenly you won't just be speaking at a lens, you'll be speaking to your favorite celebrity or somebody that represents your Ooh, clients. Oh, what a lovely I idea. Think. I and love it's that. It's a great idea, isn't it? It's a great idea. Because a lot of people have that trouble. It's like, how do I connect? How do I connect with a round bit of glass? Because that's mm. all it is. I'm here in a room on my, I mean, look, this is what I'm actually seeing. people. That's my actual view. Yeah. Right? And it's like the, 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 the illusion that we've set up here is that I'm talking to you. Yeah. But I'm, I'm, I'm in a room on my own, which is kind of weird. Now, a lot of people have trouble with that. My background is TV. I came from shopping telly. So I've had since I was 18 years old to get really, really comfortable with this. But mm. what we do need is techniques like, Helen shares where it's like, look, you got to do anything to help you connect. Mm. If staring at a round bit of glass doesn't do it, then cut out a person and put them over the lens. You know, make little holes so the lens can still see through, and talk to that person. Mm. Um, you know, we got to do whatever we can to connect because it's it's strange times we're living in. It is, you know, well, uh, like especially at the moment. The time we're doing this, we're all on lockdown, and it's like, well, you know, more people who haven't really wanted to do online stuff, are having to go real quick to be like, pivot, 
pivot, I've got to pivot. And they've never yeah. spoken to a lens before. They've never spoken to a round bit of glass. And so they come on and they're like, hello. And they're looking at themselves and they're like, oh, hello. And then they wonder why they don't connect. And, then, and the, the sad thing is then they give up before they ever really get started. Yeah. The shame. So, you know, for those of us that have had to very quickly go online where you might have been resistant, um, you know, one of the things, well, because I do online mediation and stuff as well, and right, talk right. about making the setting as natural as you can or as close to real life as you can for that person. Um, so, if you're in a situation where you are talking to someone else, like you and I are talking, how do you make it as natural as you can for that person, particularly if it's someone, you know, vulnerable that you've really got to make feel comfortable? Um, <laughs> two weeks ago, I had someone that was like, I'm scared of Zoom, like uh, genuinely, you know, they uh, had, you know, some, some mental depression and stuff. So, you know, what, what can you do? Yeah, I think there's levels there. Like I do coaching online. I don't do therapy online. Uh, and I think uh, my sister's a, an incredible therapist, especially helping people with addictions and things like that. Mm -hmm. Shout out to my sister, Andrea. And um, the, you know, we were talking about this and it's a, it's a real concern, especially for people where they feel, we generally tend to be suspicious of technology, which is again, one of those constraints, one of those stories. Mm -hmm. But for a lot of people, it's a very real story. Uh, maybe they've been taken advantage of online. You know, a lot of people have had that happen. I've had emails from things that I thought it was my bank and it wasn't. It was, you know, some Muppet on Yahoo 1369 at, you know, whatever.com. And I go, God, they nearly had my account number. So mm. lots of things that do make us suspicious of, um, you know, we hear horror stories about people being able to control our webcams. And so it's not, is it any wonder why there's a lot of fear around this? No, of course there isn't. You know, there's, mm. there's a lot of fear. The, I, I think it's, a, you've got to take these things on a case by case. In the case of your person that's, you know, like suffering from depression and, and uh, you know, they may not want to be seen. You may need to switch your camera off. You know, you may need to just do it verbally and just be like, okay, look, you can, I always, what I want to do in those instances, I know I'm not really working in a therapeutic context like that, but in those kind of contexts, I want to give my client the control. Mm, I want to be like, look, nice. you control this. If you want to, how do you want to do this? How mm. do you want to do this? You know, what would make you comfortable? We can't be in person, right? We mm. can't do that. I'm sorry. I wish we could, but we can't. Mm. What would make you comfortable? So I think we have to start like that. When I'm coaching, I... I mean, like, I'm in my living room here. I just switched the camera a minute ago. You could see I'm in my living room. I'm not in some office. I think, you know, err away from that. Mm. People tend to not want to do even, you know, you get these professional coaches and, uh, you know, they might have office complexes and do, you know, very well set up, very carefully staged, mm. um, you know, uh, setups with their cameras. And I always say to that, be really careful about that. Like, Mm. what you're looking at now is still staged and in fact to prove that what i'm going to do is i'm just going to take my ipad off the stand like yeah. i'm in my living room but i have the light here look i've got a fancy ring light right yeah and, um i'm just going to put you back on but i think that's as far as i would go like i don't that's only just so you can see me clearly so my main my main considerations are i want my clients I want to, as closely as possible, reproduce the effect if we were face-to-face. -face. Mm. So what I don't want to be is, for example, sorry for people at home, but I don't want to come on a, a session like this. Because if yeah. I'm this close to camera, <laughs> then for, for, even if you're now two feet away from your screen, the, the effect is like you, we're, we're 10 inches from each other. Mm -hmm. So I always say, like, try to play with your camera beforehand and set up like this kind of distance that we're at now is if we were sitting about three or four feet apart. Mm. For some people that will feel too close, right? So you might need to move it back and play. So I might need to go, okay, let's move it back a little bit further. How's that? Oftentimes I'm like, people like to see hands. So I always say, if you can manage your environment to the point where people can see your arms and your hands, not all the time, but like if you are making gestures, they can see that. Just because of the way the human mind works, you know this from your profession, you know, in terms of you're very good at, you know, reading people and, and seeing intent. 
Mm. I think it's very important for people to be able to see you clearly. So no dark shadows covering your eyes and dark, you know, the way I can see you right now, I can see your eyes, I can see your mouth, you know, I can see your arms, you know, mm. that kind of thing. This kind of distance is really good because it mimics if you and I were sitting three, four, five feet apart. Mm. So I think for most things you want to have this and not in an environment that looks too staged and formal. I'm here in my living room. I'm on yeah. my sofa. I've got my fluffy cushions at the end there. I've got a speaker Aww. behind me. That's it, you know? And Beautiful. Sort of, I just think try to, you know, try to mimic face-to-face -face as closely as possible. And in lieu of that, ask, ask your clients. Nice. Okay, that's really great advice, James. So thank you for the time that you spent with me today and for the time that you spent with our audience today. Do you have any final thoughts that you'd like to share with us? Uh, give it a go. Because what I would say is the great thing about online now is you can now practice. One of the things I recommend everyone do who's maybe been thinking about like this, we're doing a live video right now. You know, we can't go stop, stop, start again. If you want to do that, but you're you're not feeling that, that kind of confidence yet. The mm. great thing about doing live videos is you can, you can actually select in the privacy only you. Yeah. So you can do lots of live videos. And I always recommend people do this. I don't know why more people don't do it. It's like practice. Do a video only to you, but do it live just to get in the groove. The more you practice, the better you get. Mm. Video and doing these things online, Shay, is an athletic. Think of it like an athletic pursuit. You have to get fit. You have to practice. And so the more you practice, you can practice safely. Only you will ever see it if you do it on Facebook. You know, you can do the same thing on most of the other social media channels where just people won't see it. Mm. The more you practice, the better, the more at ease with it you'll get. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And Bless if our it. beautiful audience would like to connect with you, where can they do that? Oh, uh, check out jameslabors.com and come say hi to me on Facebook. Yeah, definitely do. He heard some really fun stuff. So if you enjoyed James going live right now, James goes live, I think, nearly every day, right? I see you Pretty going much. Yeah, quite a lot. Week, yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, he does like games nights and stuff as well. So <laughs> that's certainly been super entertaining. Um, I hope to see you soon, James, in person. Cheers, and um, take care. Lots of love. Thank you very much.